How's it going everybody and welcome to what will eventually be what I've been working on for the past couple of months. Uh, this is the introductory video of a series that I've been wanting to do for quite some time. Uh, I was actually going back through some old content and trying to make, make it make sense uh, for the delivery that I was going for. And I didn't want to make the training specifically certification centric, meaning that it would be uh, titled or uh, titled specifically to a certification. I wanted to put together a topology similar to that of the Enterprise Lab 1 topology, but, uh, but do a series of content that is geared from the entry level all the way up to, uh, I'll, I'll even, I'll go there CCIE, but not necessarily uh, to that level in terms of like complexity that you'll see in the lab. Um, so we won't be bringing any SD-WAN into this. Um, uh, there's an entire video series on SD-WAN. If you want to know more about that, jump over to that series where I rip apart Viptela and I walk you through how to do all that type of stuff. But it's been a while since I've touched it, so I honestly don't remember a lot of the, the specifics. I had to actually rewatch my own content. Uh, to learn it again. Probably wouldn't take very long to do, but at the end of the day, I want to focus on the bigger piece. Um, so, which uh, brings me to my next point. I wanted to create a series of content where it's focused for the folks that are just getting into networking and work our way up. So we're gonna get on floor one of the building and we're gonna hop in the elevator and uh, our next stop is floor two, and our last stop is floor 100, or whatever it, is, it happens to be. That might be floor 165, if there's 165 videos, or whatever. So the point here is to start off real simple and work our way up. And how I'm gonna do that is I will be taking advantage of the three different blueprints that are out there for Cisco. So we're gonna be taking a look at going through basically the CCNA blueprint. We're gonna be looking at the Encore blueprint. Go ahead and close this one out too. And then an RC. So my goal is to go through each one of these blueprints and deliver content around each of the major bullet points. And it's gonna be, I'm gonna do my best to try to make the training bullet point specific. So for example, when we talk about network fundamentals, we'll talk about the specifics of how some of this stuff works. If we talk, if there's a bullet point item that I'm not very familiar with, uh, specifically, we'll get into like wireless down here. I understand the basics to wireless, but if we were to get into, uh, let's come down here to, what's a bunch of wireless that I don't know? Um, I don't know if we're gonna see it in this, um, Right, right, like right here. So a lot of the the wireless capabilities, I'm not a wireless engineer. I, I don't really know the intricacies of how all that type of stuff works. Uh, I know the high level details, you know, you have an SSID, it provides a, uh, a wireless network, you associate to that SSID, you authenticate, and voila, you have wireless access. We're gonna be talking uh, so because of the fact that my wireless background isn't strong enough to really dive into those technologies, I am going to take the professional step back and say, y'all need to go read the books, watch other technology, read other books, watch other wireless technology videos. Uh, that's not going to be my area of expertise. So my focus for all of the content that we're going to be focusing on here is going to be that of routing and switching. So because that's that's my or my expertise lies. So my goal as we get started with this is to focus beginning in the CCNA and then work our way up to Encore and then Anarsi. And my intention is to take this uh, fairly deep. So the blueprint items, if we were to dig into them, like you're going to see. I'm gonna jump right to an RC. Like there's EIGRP, there's OSPF, there's BGP, there's VPN uh, technologies, 
there's infrastructure security. We're going to get into a lot of these technologies. So for, I know for any of you that are new to networking or don't really have a strong background in it, you're working towards your CCNA or maybe working towards, uh, I think the Cisco Certified Technology or Technician uh, is the step below CCNA or maybe you're working on your Network Plus um, and you just have a, this video comes up in your feed. If you were to, and you may not uh, have the knowledge base to extrapolate the information, but essentially if you were to take uh, the Inarsi blueprint and reverse engineer it, meaning uh, do it like an expanded blueprint, if you will, that's essentially what we're going to be doing. So another way of looking at this would be, let me go over here to uh, Cisco's website. Play this over real quick. And we'll go to certifications. And then I'm going to come down here to browse certifications. And then we're going to come down here to uh, CCIE Enterprise Infrastructure. We'll go ahead and bump into this guy. And we'll come down here to, so this is the Encore exam. We're looking at the, the lab exam. So that's what we would want to look at because we're already, we're already going to be covering what's on Encore and then taking Encore is going to get you, is, you pass that exam, that's going to automatically qualify you to take the, the lab exam. You pass an RC, that's going to earn you a CCNP in Enterprise. But if you want to take that a step further and go get your CCIE, to take the lab exam, this is where we're really going to want to focus our efforts. So let me go ahead and grab this guy real quick. Let's see what the this looks like. This is probably going to be an expanded, yeah, this is much closer to what it is that I'm going to be diving into. Here we go, much deeper. So essentially, if you were to download the CCIE Enterprise Infrastructure Blueprint, it gives you basically an expanded blueprint of all the different technologies. This is what we're going to be diving into. So it, it looks like a lot, and it is. Um, so we'll be taking a look at that. Let me jump, uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, so we're gonna be diving into all of this. I plan on basically taking the CCIE blueprint and I'm gonna be covering it very thoroughly, but I won't be focusing on, uh, I won't be diving in at the CCIE level and just focusing on the the topics that uh, it's going to be a full walkthrough. So we're going to start off with the basics first. Um, basic network engineering, how the technologies work, all that type of stuff. So let me go ahead and download that real quick. Whoops. Uh, we'll go ahead and save that. There's some stuff that you, I will edit that out. Eight minutes, 14 seconds. Okay. So that's that. Let me go back over here to the downloads. And we're gonna go ahead and pull this guy up here. And I will close all this stuff out. So I should have done should have thought about this before I started the video. But anyway, the point being here, let's let's go ahead and take a look at this. So I'm gonna spend a few a few minutes kind of walking you through of what this is gonna look like. So we're gonna be the uh, the we'll take the structure of CCNA, like network fundamentals, right? We'll take you know, what are routers? What are layer two and layer three switches? What are next generation firewalls and IPS? We're gonna take that focus, but we're going to expand upon it, right? We're gonna dig into the details. Like CCNA definitely does cover down here at the bottom. It does talk about the describe switching concepts, uh, concepts, Mac learning and aging, frame switching, frame flooding, Mac address table. If you look over here, it's basically covering the same thing. Mac managing MAC address tables, error disable recovery, layer two MTU. Those are gonna be things that you and I are gonna go over and dig into. There's gonna be a lot of details that we're gonna to need to understand in terms of what it is that networking really consists of. So if we go back over here to my topology, uh, it's actually a lot easier on the eyes than, um, than the PDF. I might have to adjust the PDF. But anyway, uh, so, I actually started to record a couple of videos before I started doing the intro and I was like, okay, 
I, in my own, uh, when I'm developing a, a series in my head and I'm walking through the flow of what that series is going to look like, I, I took the topology from Enterprise Lab and I was like, I wanted to simplify it a little bit and learn from, I won't say my mistakes, but from my shortcomings of that topology and that series. And you and I are going to build this out. So from the, the basics all the way to the top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bunch of different videos and different uh, different topics as we're going through them and instead of saying okay this the video is going to be geared to say uh, EIGRP named mode let's take the let's jump ahead a little bit where what we're not going to do is just dive into what EIGRP named mode is we're going to say okay why would you choose this over that we're gonna there's gonna be some design aspects of it too because you know it's that to me is a better value to you um, versus the more factoidal details of how a particular protocol works the differences between regular EIGRP and named mode that type of stuff so when I was trying to think of a good way to approach this because I didn't want to, I want to do something entry level CCNA and I know I talked about this in a, a tech support Thursday video where I was going to basically start at CCNA and work my way up and I want to do that but I didn't want to have like this itty bitty topology and then have to like build off from that. So what I decided to do instead was take smaller topologies and I'll zoom in on this stuff so you guys can see what I'm talking about take stuff like this, it's relatively small and easy to understand. And I will help, uh, I will walk th uh, logically, th I will walk you logically through my thought process and I will act as the, the lead engineer. That's what I'm gonna be. You all, even though there might be some people here that were, are more than qualified to do this on their own, my goal with this is to be the lead engineer you and I are going to be tasked with building this entire thing out. And um, my goal is to walk you through all the interdependencies, you know, keep, uh, keep an eye on that. I have some stuff going on up here, which we will talk about and how, why things are set up the way that they are, the connectivities uh, that I've decided to move forward with and stuff like that. If we go back to the blueprint for CCIE, even, I'm sorry, in an RC, even though in the um, in the VPN here, if you look, it says configure and verify DMVPN single hub. So we're going to be dealing with multi-point GRE, NHRP, next stop resolution protocol, IPsec, dynamic neighbors, spoke-to-spoke -spoke communication, right? Well, that's, you're supposed to be able to describe MPLS layer 3 VPN, okay? By the time you are done with that level of training, you will be able to describe how an MPLS VPN works. However, if we look at this side down here, I don't remember how far I have to go. Let's, let me jump down here to VPNs. It's a ways down here. MPLS operations, right? Um, operations, label stack, label switch router, label switch path, LDP, MPLS ping, MPLS trace route, L3 VPN. PE to CE routing using BGP, multi-protocol BGP, VPNv4, VPNv6. What this is saying right here, from here to here, is I want you to A, set up an MPLS environment and then deploy layer 3 VPN on top of that. They're actually two separate things. You have to set up MPLS inside the service router network and then you have to go through and enable layer 3 VPN. We're gonna go do that. Uh, if we go down here, it says to troubleshoot DMVPN phase three with dual hub. Well, we're gonna do that too. But if you look back here, it says configure and verify DMVPN single hub. So we'll start off with the single hub, right? We'll talk about how, what things to, th uh, to think about when it comes down to how that type of stuff works. You know, 
single hub complexities, and then let's take it a step further and do dual hub complexity. What are the things to, to be cognizant about and stuff like that. So going back over here to SD-WAN, um, if you wanna know about how all this stuff works, except for things like your um, WAN cloud, uh, edge deployment, um, doing, I didn't do T-lock extension, but uh, I did talk about, and I didn't do, I don't think I did these. I don't think I did BGP AS path propagation or software defined access SDA integration, but I covered everything else. So um, everything else for the most, and I believe this stuff right here is called cloud on ramp, if I'm not mistaken. So these are gonna be things that you're gonna have to take into consideration when you're going through and understanding how the technology works. I'm not gonna be dealing with any SD access because I don't have the capability, I don't have DNA Center. Um, there is a manual way to do that. Um, I, I have never actually done it. Um, so this is gonna be one of those situations where I'm not gonna be diving into into how SD access works uh, uh, because it is a, well, not specifically SDA with DNA Center. What we will be doing on the other hand though is let me zoom out just a little bit and come over here. I will be walking you guys through how to set up a VXLAN fabric. The reason why I've chosen to, to deploy VXLAN here and get this all working is conceptually it's the same thing as SDA. Now there are some key differences, different platform operationally and how the things are configured, but for the most part, I'd say there's a good 60 to 70% overlap. So if you understand how VXLAN works with the BGP, EVP, and control plane, then understanding how LISP, locator ID separation protocol, and v for the control plane, and then VXLAN for the data plane, you'll be like, oh, okay, cool. Then it's, it, all you have to learn is the things that you haven't already covered. So it actually fast tracks you for SDA. So it'll cover a lot of the same details. And I've this is something that I've done quite a few times. So you and I will walk through a deployment of VXLAN here, and we have some border switches here. We have our spine, a couple of these switches, and some servers attached to it to get that communication up and running. My goal, and if you notice, we don't have just iOS switches or iOS routers. We have CSR1000V, we have iOS XR, we have Nexus 9Ks. And you might say, well, why do you have all these additional platforms in here if this is gonna be centric towards enterprise? And the answer to that question is because in today's modern networks, you're going to see a mixed bag of things. So rather than only know what particular operating system, iOS or iOS XC, which basically is the same code train for the most part. Uh, syntactically, they're the same. Uh, how they work under the hood and, uh, and their architecture, that's where they differ. And you have a monolithic architecture where here you have a daemon base where it's, you know, it's hierarchical in the way that it works. So you've got these things to keep in the back of your mind. Now, you will all be able to download the topology. You'll be able to bring it into your Eve environment um, and stuff like that. I will, um, I will put the specs of my server in the description so that you guys will know what size server that I'm running and all that type of stuff. But as you can see, I'm, it's a fairly robust uh, uh, lab. Uh, topology. So this will be our main HQ site where we're going to deal with a lot of different routing. You notice that there's nothing labeled other than, and I, I haven't even finished the labeling of all the links. I'll go through that at one point in time and uh, update all the addressing and stuff like that. It, it's basically just going to be node ID connectivity. So 2557, 102557. So I'll just make it easy for us when we're doing a trace route, we're trying to identify where there's a problem. That's essentially all we're gonna be doing. So we're gonna be, uh, if we jump over back here to our Depol uh, to our blueprint, and let me go up here to um, when it comes to like routing, we're gonna do PBR, we're gonna do static routing, both unicast and multicast, so static M routes and things like that. We're gonna be doing VRF light, VRF aware routing with all the different routing protocols, 
VRF for light and VRF for where routing are basically the same thing, but there are some key differences. We'll talk about those. Um, we'll definitely be di diving into how you know, route redistribution works. We'll cover a little bit about BFD, where I have scenarios where I can do BFD. Um, I was just looking to see if there were two CSRs connected to each other. I might have to slightly rebuild one of these environments with a second CSR to show you what BFD looks like, but not terribly concerned about it. Actually, you know what, right there, I will do an additional connection right here just because for our BFD peering. Uh, 62 needs an extra interface. Let's go ahead and just edit that real quick. We'll take that from, I think it's six. Yeah, we'll go ahead and give him seven, just like that. And I'll go ahead and, so that's one of the reasons why I always, uh, when I'm actually building these topologies, I will actually go through and have the blueprint pulled up on one screen, and then I will have the topology pulled up on another, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's right, I need a, in order to do BFD, I need two CSRs, something like that. Um, so we jump back over here, uh, come down here, we're going to do a bunch of EIGRP, a bunch of OSPF. We're going to then dive into BGP and take a look at how BGP works. And you can see there's a large portion of BGP. We're going to be spending a lot of time in BGP. Um, I feel like it's like the best of all the routing protocols, I use it the most. And uh, it solves a lot of things. So we're going to be diving into multicast. What's actually kind of cool is... In Encore, where is it? Infrastructure, uh, right here. So in Encore, when we're talking about just getting into the basics, you can see right here, where's the describe multicast protocols such as the RPF check, the reverse path forwarding check, PIM, protocol independent multicast, and then IGMP v2 and v3. So the internet group messaging protocol. So we're going to take a look at how these work. We are going to do some basic multicast in the environment. And then as we dive into this a little bit further, and we take a look at, it's probably up further here. Uh, let's see where it's, where is it hiding? VPN technology troubleshooting. I don't, well, hold on, let me re read through this again. Does it have it? It doesn't specifically call it out in an RC, I don't think. Um, I don't see it. I see OSPF, BGP, VPN technologies. Infrastructure, security, services. Yeah, so in an RC, it doesn't specifically call out multicast, uh, but we're going to cover it anyway. So essentially, the, the, the part that you guys will need to worry about is for Encore, it calls out doing basic multicast, right? So we're going to do, do this real quick. So in the CC, oh, sorry, the CCIA blueprint, the CCIA blueprint goes into a lot more detail of what it is we're going to be taking a look at. So we're going to do those things. So an example of what that might look like, you might say, okay, what does that look like? So a basic multicast deployment, we'll start over here in our larger topology. Uh, let's say, for example, that we have... Um, Let's say, I'm trying to think of where a good example would be to do this. Uh, so, well, any one of these devices can be a multicast source and also a multicast receiver. So, the we'll say that R22 will be our multicast source. So, we're going to have some device attached to this is going to be sending multicast traffic. Okay, and then let's say R21 is going to be our rendezvous point. And PC20 and PC19 are going to be multicast receivers. So they're going to join a particular multicast group and 
21's going to learn about them and have both an S comma G and a star comma G entry, 22 will ping the multicast group and we should get ping replies back from 19 and 20. So we're going to walk through how to do all that. So it's fairly straightforward for the most part, but we're going to have to dig into those details and how understand how it all works and stuff like that. We're going to further complicate it. So let me give you an example of what that might look like. We're going to definitely going to be doing multicast over the WAN. So uh, it's easy to do over a VPN, uh, like a, multi, a GRE tunnel. Multicast is a piece of cake over that. So for example, we might have um, a server here that's sitting behind this guy and he wants to send traffic over to device over, or we've got receivers over here and our multicast source is over here. Or we'll figure something out. So the point being though, is that we'll have communication from point A to point B and we'll get that stood up. Now, an interesting factoid here, not in the blueprint, we go back over here to um, software defined infrastructure, come down here to MPLS, it says, uh, P to C you're writing using BGP, basic multi-protocol BGP, VPMV4, VPMV6. Okay, so what that essentially means is we're gonna be setting up a layer three VPN and that's gonna be from uh, these two devices here. All right, we'll do 58 and 59 and then 64, 65, 66 and, 6, and 46. These will be our provider edge routers, right? So what essentially we'll end up doing is we'll set up an MPLS VPN here. Once this is stood up, then we'll be able to bring all these remote sites online with layer three VPN. I have several, uh, several sites that we're gonna be bringing online, as you can see, so it'll be fairly intuitive when we get there. So you can also do multicast over L3 VPN or over MPLS. So are we gonna go that far with it? I don't know yet. We'll cross that bridge when it comes down to it, but it is not uncommon for service providers to provide multicast services over an MPLS enabled backbone. So it's easier if we were to do DMVPN. So if we have 58 and, uh, 58 and 59, we're acting as DMVPN hubs and let's say 37, 38, 24, and 23 were going to join as spokes. They joined back to the DMVPN dual hub environment that we have here. And then what would end up happening is we would just enable multicast PIM sparse mode on the tunnel. And then you would get multicast services that would be extended to these sites over an encrypted VPN tunnel. We're gonna cover those things. We're gonna get into how they work and all that type of stuff, but the, the point being here is that if it's on the blueprint, we're gonna be talking about how more than just how it works and why you would go a particular direction. This topology might change slightly from video to video over the course of the entire time that I'm going through it because I might be going through a video and they're like, oh, this would be a great idea. Let's try this and adding something to it. So I've done my best to try to think of, okay, what are all the different scenarios that we could potentially go through? But at the end of the day, um, the key factor here is that it's flexible, right? So I could add things to it. I do have some co like co-location type of scenarios that we're gonna be going through that we're gonna need to understand and that type of stuff that goes along with it. And I'm also in no big hurry to try to get this done. So. Uh, my goal is to go through the blueprint, and if you notice, I'm going to point this out to y'all for, for those that, that uh, have been paying attention. If you notice, let me go back at the top here. Uh, we get into routing protocols. We have EIGRP, we have OSPF version 2 and version 3, and we have BGP. There's no RIP. Routing information protocol version 2 is it's out the window. However, you might say... Well, good, then that's one less routing protocol I have to understand, which in this particular case, I would agree with you. However, knowing 
staining up a very small rip implementation is still going to happen. I'm still going to cover a few videos on rip just because, and you might say, well, gee, Rob, why would you do that? If the blueprint doesn't cover it, why would you cover it? Or why it doesn't call for it for you to know, why would you still cover it? And the simple answer to your question is this. I've been doing networking for a very, very long time, and my opinion of it is this. Uh, we're also going to be doing IS to IS. IS to IS and OSPF are, there's enough similarities to them to where there's enough overlap to where it makes sense. So I will choose to use routing protocols where I choose to do them. If you guys want to follow along at home and you do something a little bit differently, that's your call. It is going to be my call to do something a little bit differently. I am going to more than likely use ISIS here in the service router core uh, to do the MPLS VPN deployment. Because I'll be using OSPF in plenty of other areas as well. So, um, but I'm throwing that in because in my opinion, even though enterprise infrastructure is focusing on enterprise technologies, EIGRP, OSPF, EGP, you're not likely going to see IS to IS unless you jive into a service router network. But um, I'm going to bring this up here real quick. So I have a CCIE and route switch, right? I want to just point that out in case you uh, are new to the channel or you're like, you know, why does that matter? Well, routing is routing and switching. If you were to go uh, look at the CCIE version 5 blueprint, which I would have to go do some digging to see if I could find an expanded blueprint. As a matter of fact, one second. Hold on for me one moment. So when I was studying for my routing and switching CCIE, the uh, I started doing it, the heavy, heavy lifting, at the end of 2013, and the um, all of 2014, a good portion of 2015. It, it was a solid probably 18 to 24 months that it took me f to really dive into it. Um, so I took this blueprint um, and a lot of these technologies that you see here. So marked the following topics as written exam only. IS to IS is here, right? So I learned it anyway. Performance routing. PFR. I learned it anyway. RIPNG. I learned it anyway. We're not really going to get into RIPNG. We are going to talk about VPLS because that is a common technology that a lot of service providers use today. Um, I think it's definitely worth noting. Uh, L2TPV3. That's actually been replaced. Uh, OTV is a replacement for that and so is VXLAN. So Layer 2 Tunneling Protocol version 3 um, has been is pretty much uh, gone by the wayside. So when we look at this, even though on here there's no um, mention, uh, and we're not going to be dealing with PPP, point to point protocol, completely gone. Like you'll notice that it's not on the HDLC layer two WAN circuits, not a thing anymore. So if we come down to and there's protocol independent routing v4 and v6. Um, all that type of stuff that goes along with it. There's a lot of depth that we have to go through here. If we I notice RIP version 2, we're still going to cover a little bit of RIP because when I started studying for my CCIE, this is what I used. I used, I learned RIP. I learned, um, I learned the IGRP. I learned OSPF. I learned BGP. So I went through all of this. Uh, it, I took the time to dig into it and understand all the the additional details that were needed for this. Notice how ISIS is here. I still learned IS to IS. I did MPLS. I learned how to do all these things, IPsec land to land. I learned how to deal with DMVPN. I learned multicast. You know, I learned a lot of multicast. And so then there's obviously a lot of QoS. QoS is on the blueprint. The, it, QoS in and of itself is a massive topic area, so there's a lot of documentation that I'm going to redirect you guys to, and it's hard to do multicast or sorry QoS in the hardware or the, the the devices I'm working with. QoS really isn't supported. There's layer two security. We're going to be digging into that, but if you'll notice, these are all things that you should be 
mostly is familiar with by the time we're already when we're said and done and how that all works. So these are going to be a good workflow. We're going to be covering a lot of these different topics. So it's interesting if you were to compare the, the CCI route switch version 5 blueprint and you were to do like a side by side comparison with the enterprise infrastructure blueprint, there's going to be a lot of overlap. However, let me see if I can make this easier on the eyes. Okay, that's easier to look at. So if we look at the blueprint, you'll notice that RIP is gone and there's no mention of IS to IS. But if you, if you were to do a side-by-side -side comparison, what you'll notice is there's a lot of overlap between the, the, the blueprints. And I'll, I'll let you do that on your own time. But my point here is that, in my opinion, if you were to, like for example, if you came to me and said, hey Rob, I wanna go after my CCIE and enterprise infrastructure, I'd say, awesome, good luck to you. And you were to say, what would be your suggestion or your advice to attack that exam? My response to you would be this. Go study the CCIE route switch version five blueprint, dig into it, go and go through as many topics as you can, cover that blueprint from end to end, and then add on the software defined pieces, software defined access, software defined WAN. Those are gonna be, they, they added those topics as well as, what is it down here? The programmability. That's what they added. They added programmability to the end. If you were to add those topics to the CCA route switch version five blueprint, that's your CCA that, that's your CCA training. So you don't necessarily have to do that, but as somebody that's been through it, and I, I recognized it when I saw it. I was like, well, you might as well learn it anyway. So why not? So we're obviously there's gonna be several things we're not gonna be able to take a look at because you know the hardware doesn't support it or the, the platforms we're working with don't support them. And I'm not gonna spend a ton of time going through each one of these and explaining what they are um, we'll go through this as we get further along um, in the in the platform or in the uh, in the training and stuff like that. But as we get into the uh, as we get into the weeds of how it works, you're gonna start to see a lot of stuff coming together and how it operates. So that's what I really want you guys to be for, uh, be aware of is you have this. I'm only showing this because this is what I used. Yeah, there's really there's no magic behind the scenes. It's not like you know I waved a magic wand one day and then I uh, magically became uh, very very familiar with these writing protocols and all that type of stuff. It took a crap load of time. I'm just gonna be honest with you. So it's gonna take time to go through all this content, but we're gonna be taking taking it from a uh, it's like a staggered approach of this is what you need to know in order to make this work. This is how this operates. This is what you need to do in order to make this work. Stuff like that because whether you do things um, the, the hardware or the easy way. Take my advice or don't. It's your decision. My goal is to walk you through in this topology how to make this stuff work. We're going to start off with the easy stuff. We're going to my goal is if you're starting at the CCNA, Network Plus, CCT, whatever entry level certification you're working on, is start you off at the ground level where you don't feel intimidated, overwhelmed, or you know, like you don't know what you're doing. Because guess what? I didn't know what I was doing at one point in time and I needed somebody to tell me what to do. I mean, there's, um, there are people that I can, I'm actually thinking back to back when I first got started. So I'm thinking back to like 2009, 2010, when I was just getting started with networking. And I remember, I'm, I'm gonna tell the story anyway. I remember working in a knock for a financial company in the Milwaukee area and being it was a call center. A very, it was a small call center, but a call center nonetheless. Uh, I remember 
being in the call center, the phone ringing, and my me answering the phone, network support, this is Rob, and then having a customer explain to me that there's an issue and it's my job to try to resolve it. Whether I could or not was debatable, but I'd be like, okay, can you, uh, can you hang on for a second? I need to go uh, ask a colleague a question. Oh, actually, yeah, sure, no problem. And so I ended up um, going to a coworker who was far more technically savvy than I was, and I went up to him. I won't say a name because I haven't talked to this guy in 10, almost 15 years. Um, I walked up to him, and I said, hey, man, I said, this is the problem the customer's got. And the first thing he said, can he ping his gateway? I was like, okay, cool. So, um, so I walked oh, back over and said, can you ping your gateway? You know, you know, open up a command prompt, you know, Windows R, uh, CMD, ping, uh, do an IP config. Uh, literally walking, like, I didn't know this was a VP of the bank. I had no idea who this guy was. And walking him through the process of how to ping his gateway. No, I can't ping my gateway. Oh, okay. Well, the network that I supported, our support ended right here at the router. Like we could connect in. So for example, I'm I'm over here at this call center and, or actually that's a bad example. Um, I'm over here attached to this location and then I'm having to jump across the MPLS VPN network to this device over here or this device over here. And this is as far as I can get. And I'm like, okay, well, what's your IP address? Can I ping you? No, I can't ping you. Okay, well, we don't own this, this portion right here, the switching. I don't own that. So I don't know what it is that's not working there, but you'll have to call whoever owns that. And I remember him very specifically saying, you guys do. I was like, no, sir, we don't. I was like, as far as our support goes, or the equipment that you are running, this particular box, whatever it might have been, this is a long, this is 12, 13 years ago. So what would that have been? I don't even remember. Some sort of ISR, like a 2800, something like that. Probably was with the phones, 2821, something like that. Um, but anyway, uh, you could run call manager on a 2821. So uh, yeah, call man a router on a call man call manager on a router. That was always fun. Um, so I would do a show CDP neighbor and I'd be like, okay, well, there's a Cisco switch. I know it's this model, it's like a 3560 or something like that. So he would have to call somebody and then eventually they found out, oh yeah, there was a trust command not set up. Um, so on the trust interface, so they had DHCP snooping enabled. And I was just like, oh, okay, well that makes sense. So once he was, and I stayed on the line, you know, the customer's down, he's calling us for support. I'm there to, to help out. He's taking a look at it, and then eventually we were able to get it resolved. The point being there is I was green. I really didn't know what to do to fix the problem. And so my goal is to walk you guys from the basics, you know, something small like this, all the way up to getting a full large-scale deployment stood up and online. By the time we're all said and done, this will be fully built out. We'll have end-to-end re -end reachability. Connectivity will be in place the way we need it to be. I will have to inject certain problems into the network once we get into the NRC track. Because NRC, if you read through the, uh, the, um, the, here, it's a lot of troubleshooting. Troubleshoot this, troubleshoot that. It's like, okay, cool, I'll troubleshoot it. So there's a lot of getting into the details of how it works and troubleshooting it. Well, we're going to troubleshoot it. So in other words, I'm going to have to break the crap out of this network. And by that time, we'll have most of this stuff stood up. You know, we're going to go through, if you look back over here, um, when it takes a look, it talks about the, the routing protocols. It talks about EIGRP clay, classic and named mode, VRF and global. So we're going to do VRF aware routing with EIGRP. So we're going to have to set this stuff up where we're going to do like, uh, I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but like we'll have to do front door VRF on this interface and do EIGRP and do a BGP pairing and EIGRP over the top of it. 
inside of you know DMVPN and things like that. So we're gonna have to dig into those details in order for us to start troubleshooting the problem. We're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to come up with things that are gonna break, and you and I are gonna have to troubleshoot them, whatever that might look like. So when you start getting into the details of that, those are things that you're gonna we're gonna have to go through troubleshoot them to figure out why they're not working. So I'm gonna inject the problems. I'll come up with a whole set of cases. We'll get this thing fully working through Encore. Encore is gonna be our um, Encore and then anything that goes beyond, uh, and I'm gonna break it out. So if you've got the, the CCA blueprint, what I want you to do is we're going to start going through this. My goal is when we start getting into the, in the individual routing protocols, we're going to go through how this stuff works, right? So we're going to go through each one of these as we're, once we get beyond CCNA and we get into Encore, we're going to start getting into the details of how this stuff works. So that by the time we get here, you're not going to be like, I don't know. So we'll have a fully operational network by the time we get done with with that. And then the intention is the, the CCA blueprint will be our uh, check, a list of things to go over and to, and to test out and configure and understand. And then when we get to a NARCI and we have everything stood up, it'll be at that point here where I start taking a completely functional network and then I will come up with, I don't know, 20, 30 tickets and we will have to fix things. Things will not be working correctly. And, or I may not have them all work, all implemented at the exact same time, but what I will do is I'll come up with some sort of mechanism to test, walk you guys through a bunch of tickets of how to solve this or how to solve that. And obviously I'm gonna test these things out before I do them. I might do them one at a time, just so that, you know, if you, uh, as far as I know, with the new way that the CCA lab is broken out with that format, is it's um, design, operate, optimize. I think, how is that set up? I honestly don't, don't remember. Um, let me look at the SPV5. Um, That is a good question. Let me jump back here to the, what does the delivery look like? Additional resources. Uh, there is supposed to be A, I might actually have to look at the exam, the exam topics. Is it listed on this? Hold on one second. Let me jump back over here to the blueprint. Oh, it's right here at the top. Never mind. I don't need to worry about that. So the eight-hour hands-on exam that requires the candidate to plan, design, operate, and optimize dual-stack solutions for complex enterprise networks. So. Design, so there's going to be, I forget, how, I think it's three hours of design. And then you have to answer a bunch of questions and then you have to operate and optimize. So there's probably going to be troubleshooting and that's where we're going to do that. We're going to dig into how it all works. So we're going to use the, um, we're going to use the Inarsi um, blueprint as our mechanism to is our blueprint to troubleshoot with, because essentially this is the T-shoot exam. Encore is basically route switch. Um, so for the old CC and CCMP, you had route switch and T-shoot. So you'd have route and switch is basically Encore. It goes through all of the, the routing protocols, um, switching, uh, there's gonna be some virtualization we'll talk about and stuff like that. And then in T-shoot is basically a NARSI. You're basically being forced to explain how this works, this, that, or the other, all that type of stuff. That's how I pass the CCMP. And that's like, for, it seems like forever ago. Uh, 20, 2013, 2014, 
what, it's been 10 years, I think, guys, since I've, 10, 11 years, something like that, that I, since I've passed the, um, the CCMP. Uh, I've had the CCA almost eight years. So, uh, it'll be eight years next month, actually, which is kind of crazy. Um, but anyway, we'll take that flow and that'll be how we get all this stuff working. So CCA Blueprint is going to be all the topics we're going to cover, but we're going to take it from CCNA ground floor and work our way up to CCNP, understand how all the technologies work, and then for route switch, and then we're going to take a NARCI is going to be where I break the crap out of the network, and then you and I will go back and we'll fix it. How to identify the problems, things like that. So it'll be interesting to see exactly how it all plays out and everything, uh, how everything checks out because at the end of the day, um, that's essentially what we're gonna need to do is have a working knowledge of the networks and stuff like that. So um, I'm not gonna say that everything will be on. Uh, so the, the VXLAN fabrics, I may not have them uh, completely operational. I might have one fabric working for testing purposes uh, just to show you guys what it looks like. But at the end of the day, that's what we're going to go do. So um, I encourage you, I'm going to try to remember to put the all the links for the exam topics in the description so you guys can download them all if you, um, we do that. Uh, I would definitely suggest if you're serious about going after your CCIE, um, start off with Route Switch V5, the expanded blueprint. Um, this is definitely a good starting place and it gives you a, you know, uh, a glossary of things that you need to go and, and go learn and how they work and stuff like that. And obviously, you know, PPP, HDLC, high, uh, HDLC, I forget what that stands for. Um, so obviously you got a lot of stuff here that we're going to have to go through. So, but this is going to be, this would essentially be like the, the place where we would start for routing is you know, understand how all that type of stuff works. But again, I'm gonna reiterate over and over and over again, we're gonna start off with the basics and work our way up to the time we're all said and done. You guys will be, this won't look intimidating. Oh, I, I know what I forgot to mention. So my intention, there's gonna be some NAT on these devices so we can get some stuff working there. So uh, there's not gonna be any firewalls, there's not gonna be any Palo Alto or ASA, um, anything like that. We're gonna, if, it's a, if the router supports it, we're gonna roll with it. We're going to have these INET servers here. This is going to be our Google lookup. So when we're on a PC here and we want to test NAT, we'll tell NAT to quad eight and see if we can't get that working. Uh, stuff like that. This will be a colo, but again, I'll talk about more of that stuff down in detail when we get into it for like replication. We'll have, you know, this subnet here. We'll be able to talk to this subnet over here. We'll be simulating replication and uh, DMVPN head end where these servers are down here and then the servers are available over here. We'll come up with some sort of failover scenario that we need to walk through and stuff like that. So um, this is the type of stuff that I, I, I have to work with every day is complicated networking. So um, I'm hoping that the information that I'm able to convey to you all in this series of videos will hopefully cover that and be the uh, the one-stop shop, if you will. So, um, and if there's like, any questions on any stuff, drop a comment in the comment section below. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff that goes along with it. Um, every configuration that we do, um, so the other thing I'm gonna be doing is I've been hearing a lot lately where folks from other countries that are watching these videos, they can't, um, they might not have the join option. It might, it's country specific. So most cut people in the U.S. they're able to watch it. Uh, they want to to join, to download the configurations, the topology files, um, configuration files. All of that stuff will be uh, it, you'll get, be given access to that uh, through a ten dollar a month membership. For those of you that can't do it through the join button on the channel, I am looking at doing a Patreon where you'll be able to, I'll put that in the description, where you'll be able to click on that, you'll be able to pay to access EVNG files, all the configuration files, all that type of stuff. Um, and I'm gonna do, my goal is to get as, 
the device is configured at a base level IP addressing. So all we have to dive in and do, well, there might be a few here that we're going to configure manually just because, um, you know, like CCNA type stuff, you know, configuring an IP address on an interface, you know, something very, very simple. Um, we'll go through that. But anything that is beyond the video, that like is in the video that you want to get access to, you'll be given, uh, given access to that um, uh, for a small nominal fee. And then uh, my goal is to the videos themselves, any content, uh, you'll, I'll never charge for the videos. I'll charge for the content in the videos because this is, that takes time, uh, time and effort, um, stuff like that. So the technical content um, is, you know, the, watching the video is always going to be free. I'm never going to charge for that. I've decided not to go try to do a training platform and then charge X amount of dollars per month and then deal with all the, the rigmarole. YouTube has been really, really good for me. Um, the... Uh, the subscribership is starting to grow again. I'm over 33,000, coming up on 34,000 here shortly. So my goal is to try to take the momentum that I've got built and take this and put it on there. Once this is done, which has been a long time coming, I want to circle back. And this will be, uh, my goal is to update this over time. So if there's uh, like a new version of the exam comes out, I don't have to sit there and re-record everything. All I have to do is supplement the new videos or the new content, uh, stuff like that. So um, that is my goal. I'm still working on a name for the series. It's probably going to be the Cisco Enterprise series, um, but I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll cross that bridge. And the other thing that I'm thinking about is. Um, Service provider is another track that I would like to cover, but uh, I don't want to rehash all the technologies that I've already covered. So I probably would, you know, still cover them, but dig into the service provider specific technologies like in-depth MPLS VPNs, inter-AS uh, MPLS, uh, multicast MPLS, stuff like that, um, and dig into those details. So hopefully that'll uh, that's going to be the easy part, but. Um, that's kind of where I'm sitting with it right now. So if you guys have any thoughts on that, drop a comment. Until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by, and I'll catch all of you in the next video.